Accounting for Treasury Stock Treasury stock is a corporation's own stock that it has purchased back from the market. So the shares were already issued and were being held by shareholders, and now the corporation is buying them back. And there's a number of reasons that corporations will do this. One might be that they need those shares in order to reissue them to officers of the company or even employees under a bonus or a stock compensation plan. Remember, a corporation only has a limited number of authorized shares. And if they've reached that limit, but yet they need to issue shares for a bonus or a stock purchase plan for employees, then they have to buy them back from the market in order to reissue them to those people. Another reason might be to enhance the stock's market value. Remember, we are buying shares back from the market, and so the shares are out there being traded. And if the management of the corporation feels that the share price is too low, they could buy back some shares, which would reduce supply, and we know that supply and demand tells us if our supply goes down, then prices tend to go up. That also could have an increase on earnings per share. If we take our net income divided by shares outstanding, if the shares outstanding decreases, that increases the calculation for earnings per share. And lastly, another reason could be that the corporation needs those shares in order to use them as part of the acquisition of another company. Okay, but whatever the reason, the purchase of treasury stock, the accounting is pretty much the same. Companies generally use the cost method when they are recording the purchases of treasury stock. And when they're buying that stock, it goes into a new account called treasury stock. That account is a contra stockholders equity account, which means it's in the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet, but it reduces overall stockholders equity because it has a debit normal balance we debit the account for the price that they pay to buy those shares back from the market. So let's look at an example. On February 9, 2020, Wesson acquires 5,000 shares of stock at $9 per share. So the $9 is the market price. They have to pay the market price in order to get the current shareholders to sell it to them. Okay, so they're acquiring the shares, and so they're going to debit treasury stock for $45,000 and credit cash because they have to pay actual cash to the former shareholders. Now let's look at the sale of treasury stock. The sale of treasury stock could occur above cost, meaning for more than what the company paid to acquire it back from the market, and that results in paid in capital from treasury stock. They also could end up selling it below what they paid to get it off, which is below cost. That reduces paid in capital from treasury stock, and it even could reduce retained earnings. In either way though, both above cost and below cost result in an increase in total assets and stockholders equity. A corporation does not record a gain or a loss from the sales of treasury stock. We just record it above cost or below cost and adjust the paid in capital accounts. So let's look at an example of the sale of treasury stock above cost. So on March 1, Weston sells for $10 per share, 1,500 shares of its treasury stock that it had previously acquired at $9 per share. So they're selling 1,500 shares at $10 each, and they're selling them back to the market. So we're receiving $15,000 cash, so we would debit cash. Now, they're selling these shares, so we need to reduce our treasury stock then by that original cost, which was the $9 per share. And since they sold it at basically a dollar more per share, that difference is an increase to paid in capital from treasury stock. And that's a credit that we're increasing that account. So if we look at Wesson's account, we previously bought $45,000 worth of stock back from the market. And now we're selling it back to the market. And so that reduces the treasury stock account. However, we sold it above cost, so that creates paid in capital from treasury stock for $1,500. Again, this is the sale journal entries if they sell it above cost. Now let's look at the sale below cost. So now Wesson's going to sell an additional 800 shares of treasury stock at $8 per share. So again, they're selling 800 shares at $8, so they're going to receive $6,400 of cash, so we'll debit cash for that amount. And then we need to credit treasury stock to remove the 800 shares at the original $9 cost. 
And now, since we've actually sold them back for less than what they cost us to buy them, that results in a decrease, which is a debit to paid in capital from treasury stock. So now they had bought 45,000 shares. In the prior journal entry, they sold 13,005 of treasury stock. Now we've sold an additional $7,200 worth of treasury stock. And then on the paid in capital, on the prior journal entry, we created $1,500 worth, and now it's being decreased by $800. Now we're going to sell some more stock below our cost. Now they're going to do another sale on November 7th. They sell its remaining 2,700 shares. So all the shares that they have bought back, they're now selling them off. They're selling those at $7 per share. So again, they are getting some cash here. They're getting $18,900 of cash. And we have to remove the treasury stock, which was the 2,700 shares, were originally purchased for $9. Okay, and then, because, again, we sold it for less than the treasury stock, we have to reduce our paid-in capital. Okay, but if we look at our accounts, our paid-in capital only had $700 left before it reached zero. And so that's the maximum amount you're allowed to debit to paid-in capital from treasury stock. You cannot debit paid-in capital for treasury stock for more than the credits. You cannot have a debit balance. And so because of that, when we still need to balance our journal entry, that money actually has to come out of retained earnings. So when you're selling below cost, you can debit paid in capital from treasury stock to the extent that it's available. If there's no more available, then it has to be a debit to retain earnings. So let's look at a summary. Again, when they're buying treasury stock, they're buying it back off the market, you debit the treasury stock account and you credit cash. When they sell it again, if they sell it above cost, you debit cash for the amount they sold it, you credit treasury stock to remove that treasury stock, and you credit paid in capital in excess of cost, which actually increases equity. If they sell it back below cost, you're still debiting cash because they're still receiving cash, and you're still crediting treasury stock because you still have to remove that credit treasury stock, but you're going to debit paid in capital from treasury stock to decrease it, and if necessary, also debit retain earnings. Okay, so I hope that this summary helps you out to understand how we do the transactions for buying and selling treasury stock.